Most of us have journeyed with young children, and we're familiar with their oft-asked question, how far is it? Are we almost there yet? Early Adventist hymn writer Annie Smith caught that emotion with her hymn, How Far From Home. Annie was a young lady, discovered, if you will, by James White when she sent a poem in to the Advent Review and Sabbath Herald. Seeing her talent and her gift for words, he he hired her as a copy editor to work alongside her brother, Uriah, and together they worked in the Advent Review and Sabbath Herald office for several years. While there, she met and fell in love with J.N. Andrews. J.N. Andrews met and fell in love with Angela and Stevens. And so Annie was disappointed. We have 10 of her hymns in our current Adventist hymnal, but she died at the age of 27 of tuberculosis. Ellen White said that she died partly of disappointment. How far from home, we're almost there. Oft a healing bomb has brought 
and dry the mourner's tears. When we go
Francis Ridley Hovergall was a dynamic poet inspired by the Holy Spirit. She sought to write a poem for Jesus, inspired by a beautiful portrait of the crucifixion, depicting the wonderful fact that Jesus gave his all for every human being. She was very discouraged by the quality of her work. She sought to get rid of the poem, sought to burn it up. Somehow it didn't burn. It got retrieved by her father, who put a rhythm, a wonderful melody, to the actual lyrics that she wrote. I gave my all for thee. What in turn have you given me? The beauty of God's appeal is that we should give our all. We may have wasted 80% of our lives, and all we have is 20% left. Jesus says, give me what you've got. Amen. I'll take what's left, and I'll do more with that than you could have done with 100%. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou mightst ransom be, and quicken from the dead. Heart glad 
Charles Tinley was born in the state of Maryland in 1851. His mother was a free woman, but his father was a slave. And so Charles grew up knowing what it meant to be free and knowing what it meant to be enslaved. His mother died when he was four, and he was separated from his father. So he was raised by his Aunt Caroline. But God had planted the seeds of greatness in his heart. And by the age of 17, he had taught himself how to read and to write. He moved his wife and family to the city of Philadelphia 
where he worked in a small church while going to school at night. He mastered Greek and Hebrew and largely prepared himself for the gospel ministry. By 1902, he had become the pastor of the church where he had once served as the janitor. And before his death, he had grown that congregation to over 12,000 members. The church is there today. It is the Tinley Memorial Church on Broad Street. Along with shepherding that large congregation, he was also a prolific hymn writer. And among his classics was, We'll Understand It By and By, and We Shall Overcome Someday. The song that became the, the theme song of the civil rights era. There is something about the experience of suffering that lends itself to both testimony and praise. And so many of Tinley's songs depict the experience of sorrow, the struggle and challenges of suffering and the victory that all can know through Jesus Christ, Amen. our Lord. For skies and howling tempest of succeed a bright sunshine In that land of perfect day When the midst have rolled away We will understand it better by The sun awares, and our hearts are made to bleed for many thoughtless word or deed. And we wonder why the tears when we try to do our best, but we'll understand it better by and by.
just why he came to love me so he looked beyond my fault and saw for grace my soul would be a drifting ship with no safe harbor from the angry waves but Calvary's cross shines brightly through the darkest storm I love hymns that remind us of how powerful God is. And I like that because I know and I recognize how weak I am. But I also know that in my weakness, when I allow God to dwell inside me, then I am strong. And I want everybody to be reminded of that fact, that He is always there. People may let us down, we may sometimes let ourselves down, but God never does.
Franklin E. Belden was born in 1858 in Battle Creek, Michigan. But while the family had settled in Battle Creek, they decided to move to California while Franklin was only eight years of age. The fascinating thing about that move is that when they moved to California, Franklin began to compose songs, to write songs. When he was 30 years of age, he moved back to Battle Creek. And there he began to be the songwriter for the evangelist Billy Sunday. During his career, he wrote some 389 pieces of music. It's an amazing thing when you think about it. One of his most favorite songs is the song, Blessed Lord, How Much I Need Thee. Blessed Lord, how much I need Thee. We can see the poor and the blind. Take my trembling hand and lead me strength and sight in Thee I find. spoken word will be a blessing to to all those who watch that that they won't hear us singing or the words but that they will hear God speaking directly to their heart calling them into a deeper 
relationship with him, that they will truly be willing to surrender all to him and to take hold of what Christ is offering them through his death and resurrection. And I think if this is the result of, of the music we are putting together, then we will have done what God has called us to do. We will, it will be, have been a success. Robert Lowry was a Baptist pastor 
And when the offerings weren't enough, he had to teach classical literature. And somehow he found time to write 500 hymns. Unbelievable. And he tells this story. One day he was reclining on his sofa, and it was a warm afternoon, and he drifted off to sleep, and the Lord gave him a vision. And the vision was what it was like to look into heaven, into the very gates of heaven, and he saw God's throne there high and lifted up, and then he saw a clear, crystal clear river of water flowing from God's throne. Enjoy the words of Shall We Gather at the River. Crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. On the years ago, I read an amazing story. And it was literally a story that I couldn't put down. Have you ever read The Price of Freedom? Yes. Yes. Wow, what a book. It's a miraculous story of how God led two young men in an incredible escape from Romania into Italy and then into the free world. I want you to welcome the Freedom Singers who are now singing for the Lord. Welcome, Freedom Singers. Far away in the depths of my spirit tonight a melody Sweet boy. 
this wonderful peace. I'm resting sweetly in Jesus' control. Who don't know Alison? Well, you're going to love her. Believe me, we all we have all gotten to love Alison. Uh, she came on our recent cruise to Alaska just last year, and uh, we got to love you. We're, we're adopting you, Alison. Okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Alison goes back to a very famous Spear family. Now, I'm sure you've all heard of them. They were basically the founders of Southern Gospel music. And Allison's husband, Brian, well, he's the son of the famous Brock Spear of the Spear family. And uh, so quite a heritage, Allison. Very wonderful yeah, heritage. We, mm. Yeah, we love your voice. You know, Allison told us at the end of the cruise, she said, you know, Jan, that is the best cruise I have ever been on. And I was hoping it wasn't the only one. <laughs> no, it wasn't the only one, and I gained 32 pounds on that cruise. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> oh, Alison, we're just so glad that you're part of Family Reunion. And when Alison sings, she sings for the Lord, and you're going to love it. Thanks, Alison. <laughs> Savior to me. 
my soul in the cleft of the rock where rivers of pleasure I see beautiful but wow you know Tim it's always about a hundred times better when you sing with a good accompanist <laughs> and, uh, well, and, and reverse I, is also true <laughs> <laughs> well I call Tim an accompanist and a pianist extraordinaire <laughs> he is fantastic and you know Tim and Alison Larry Ford are all regulars with the Gaither Homecoming series, and I'm sure you're so familiar with them, and we are just honoured to have you here. So thank you so much for coming, Tim. We're, as I said, we're adopting you all. You're part of family reunion now. <laughs> so play it, Tim. <laughs>
Cleland McAfee had one hymn that he's noted for. 1903 was the year that came to his mind. Out of tragedy, his nieces died tragically of that disease, diphtheria. Out of the brokenness of that family came the words, words that have brought peace and comfort over many, many years. Millions have been blessed by those words in that song. The voice of prophecy for many years has ended its broadcast with this song. Near to the heart of God. There is a place of quiet the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest, near to the heart of God.
You are two very, very special people to us. I haven't known you for so long, but Warren, my husband, has known you for a long time. And uh, you two dear people come from Brazil and are so well loved and respected in Brazil and around the world. But Brazil in particular, where you two have just done so much music, mentored so many people, <coughs> Williams, you have written and arranged at least over a thousand songs. Uh, he has... <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> he has conducted many, many well-known orchestras around the world, including the London Symphonic Orchestra and the Prague Symphonic Orchestra. Pretty big stuff. <laughs> And uh, we're just so happy to have you here. And Sonetti, come and join me. Sonetti is also a wonderful musician in her own right. She has sung for many large evangelistic crusades in Brazil and has done a lot of work on radio and television. And these two people are just very well loved in Brazil and around the world. And we're glad you're living in the US now. That's great. <laughs> They're going to sing one of their own special songs to us. Thank you so much. We're glad you're here. Join Family Reunion with us. We're glad. Great. <laughs> Sweet as home, I can call my own. Near to the heart of God, trouble no more, no pain or fear, Lord. May this day be near I know that I'm a pilgrim in this world I have no place but I desire to feel the soothing touch of your embrace oh Lord all I long for is to see you face to face About the wonder of your grace But as long as I am living in this world Often I must sense the devil's wrath unfold There are times in which I feel As if God's presence isn't real But then I kneel to seek and pray What he is trying to reveal The enemy he trembles when I fold my hands to pray And the falling angels flee in their dismay I know that Christ is able to restore me from within For he gave his life a sacrifice for sin Oh Lord, please make me faithful, make me faithful to your love Cause I want to live in heaven up above Oh Jesus, make me faithful, make me faithful to your word Cause I want to live in heaven with you, Lord. I love this next song. It's a song about fighting the good fight. Now, it originated from Tennessee. You've heard of the Hatfoy McCoys? 
Well, this was Otis Leon McCoy. He wrote a song, Keep on the Firing Line. Okay. I like that. You know, it talks about perseverance and courage, and it's where the Christian needs to be, right? Yes. So he said it pretty well when he said, if you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the firing line. Yes. If, you, if you win the battle, surely you must fight. So keep on the firing line. Yes. Beautiful shore, but 
Thank you, Margie. If we think that conflict and heated discussion about what music is appropriate for worship is a thing of the 20th and the 21st century, we need to think again. Amen. Actually, in the 17th and 18th centuries, some of the saints we're having, uh, what shall I call it, a shameful disharmony <laughs> about music and uh, what would be okay to have in worship services. Well, the saints, they believed that it would only include the psalms sung straight from Scripture. But then there was this upstart, uh, Isaac Watts, <laughs> came along and he declared that it was okay to have human written hymns. And so the folks, they just, well, there was fisticuffs almost. And finally, they came to the place where they compromised. And uh, they agreed that they'd do the psalms at the beginning of the service, and they'd do the hymns at the end. And the saints who didn't want to have spoiled souls, they could leave. <laughs> or just sit there and wait. It is thought possible that Isaac Watts wrote a heavenly joy on earth to try to give these saints a message. It is that song that Robert Lowry set to music and added a refrain to so we can sing Marching to Zion. Come we that love the Lord and let our joy be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And the
Come Thou Fount is a song that I have sung my whole life. And when we decided to do a hymns project, I wanted this song to be a part of it, particularly because of the last stanza. That verse means so much more to me now than it ever did before. I, in my Christian journey, I'm beginning to understand what that grace is really all about. And you usually hear this song done, you know, fairly March-like in church, you know, come thou found kind of thing. But here we treated it gently and sweetly, um, trying to help bring out those beautiful words once again so that we look at them differently than we've ever heard them before and try to experience more of what that message is, that message of grace that he's given us. Young George Bernard felt that he was called to be an evangelist at a very early age in his life. He had some things that he had to do for his family, so he wasn't able to get to it as quickly as he did, or as he wanted to really, but as a young man he became a part of the Salvation Army, and he had the opportunity to become more and more involved in evangelism. In 1912 and 1913, in Wisconsin and in other places in that part of North America, he became involved in a tremendous, tremendous evangelistic experience. And during that time, he was thinking about that tremendous text of Scripture, John 3.16, For God so loved the world. 
And as he thought about that, there came to him a song that has been a favorite of Christians all around the world. That song that God gave George Bennard is one we know as the Old Rugged Cross. To my home, far 